Okay. So um, this morning I'll be talking about our FDA ECTD version 4.0 implementation update. Um, we are busy getting ready to start accepting uh, this 4.0 standard. So the learning objectives for this morning's presentation are number one, understand the fundamental ECTD 4.0 concepts, be able to discuss FDA's ECTD 4.0 implementation strategy, and know how to prepare for ECTD 4.0 uh, in your organization. So I start with the goals for ECTD 4.0. Uh, looking at ICH's ECTD 4.0 implementation guide, it talks about some of the key business drivers. And this is not an exhaustive list, just some of them, but document reuse, the ability to do more with document and metadata lifecycle, uh, the ability to use management of context groups. And I'm going to get into each of these in the following slides. So let's start with the concepts. So first of all, in ECTD 4.0, uh, there's a backbone file, just like there is in today's version 3.2.2. But in 4.0, it's just a single backbone file for the submission. And it's called submissionunit.xml. And it contains the ECTD metadata for all the modules the harmonized modules, which are modules two through five, as well as the regional module, which is module one. Now, in addition to that, FDA has been using what's called uh, study tagging files, stf.xml files, to capture metadata around studies as well. That information is going to be uh, rolled up into the submission unit.xml file as well. Now, on to document reuse. Once a document is submitted, the document can be reused by referencing its unique identifier from the same or different submission unit or sequence. So what, what is this all about? When you submit a file for the first time in your ECTD submission, uh, your ECTD publishing tool is going to be able to assign a unique document identifier to it. And underneath that unique document identifier, it's going to have information like what you want the title of the document to look like on the um, regulatory authority side. What's the path to that file? It also gives you the ability to update that document title later on if you need to. Now, ECTD 4.0 also brings around this concept of context of use. Now, for those of you that are very familiar with 3.2.2, there's vocabulary that's called leaf and leaf element and leaf title. In ECTD 4.0, it's called context of use and context groups. So what is this about? Context of use is about placing a document within the table of contents heading and section. It provides information regarding the usage of the document and its life cycle. And then the keyword gives additional information about the context of use. So what you see on the bottom of the screen is an example of a context of use, and that's in purple, where it has heading 3.2.S2 manufacture. The information in green are keywords, and these are sender-defined keywords. So the applicant is actually defining what the name of the you know, manufacturer is and so forth. We take this a step further when we talk about a context group. So the combination of the context of use which is the predefined ICH heading for a section, and the keyword, which is the sender-defined keyword that goes with that heading, you get a context group. And so the example here are two context of uses. I've got context of use X and context of use Y. And you'll notice everything is the same about these except for the manufacturer, right? You see context of use X, has 3.2.S2 manufacture. That's the predefined ICH heading in module three. Context of use Y is using that exact same predefined heading. The substance is the same, but they differ on manufacture. And then what happens is over on the regulatory authority side, when they're looking at this submission in their ECTD viewer, they're going to see two 3.2.S2 manufacture headings, but the reviewer will be able to distinguish them by that keyword information that's inside. ECTD4 also brings about the concept of group title. What does this do? 
what happens is currently with ECTD 322, you place documents at the lowest level of the predefined heading. With ECTD 4.0, it adds flexibility. So if you have multiple documents, like this example, where we have document title one all the way through document title six, instead of them being all grouped together directly under M32P7 container closure blister, the applicant is able to further define categories at that lowest level. Group title one, group title two. Of course, the applicant can name those group titles whatever they want. ECTD4 also brings about the concept of priority number. Today in ECTD322, regulators don't always see your documents in the order that you send them in. So yes, they are going to see all the documents under the heading that you tell them to be under, but they may not be listed in a certain order. It just depends on the ECTD viewer program that they're using. With ECTD 4.0, it allows um, applicants to actually define, be explicit about the order of the documents under a particular heading. In addition to that, because it allows that ordering, it also allows you to come back in a later sequence and change the order if you need to. I'm gonna skip over this. I already covered uh, document identifier. Now, being able to update document information is one of the key, another key real benefit of ECTD4. So in this example, the applicant made a typo in the document title. So what's the typo? They put manufact instead of manufacturing. So on the left is sequence one with this typo. With ECTD 4.0, they're able to do a very efficient update of the document title without having to life cycle the document. It's a really big advantage. Today, if you make a, if you make a mistake on the document title, or we call it leaf title in 322, in order to fix it, you have to actually use life cycle of delete and delete it out and then re-reference the document again as new to fix that title. And of course, that breaks up the whole life cycle um, train there. In a similar way, you can update, update display name values. So what are the display name values? Those are the actual values you see from the keywords. So you see in sequence one, the applicant had sent something in and they have ACE manufacturer as the keyword. And then they need to change that in sequence two. They can do that simply by just using their ECTD publishing tool to indicate that they're changing the display name value of a particular keyword. They don't have to delete all the documents under the heading like they do today and resubmit them. Document lifecycle is another benefit that we have. So currently with 322, we have the ability to uh, you know, do document lifecycling, but you can only do one-to-one. -one. With ECTD4, you can not only do one-to-one, -one, right? We keep that, but you can do many-to-one and one-to-many. So it really adds a lot more flexibility uh, in terms of what you're doing. And what happens here is behind the scenes, the regulatory authority will be able to see the linkages um, between these actions. So on the bottom there, on the bottom left, I just have an example here where the applicant submitting a document uh, in sequence two, that's replacing three documents that were previously submitted in sequence one. And the reviewer or the regulatory project manager on the FDA side, they would be able to see that linkage, that association, um, even if you don't say anything about it um, in the document or in your cover letter. So I just threw a lot of information at you. I'm gonna pause here for a minute and we're gonna go with our first challenge question. An ECTD 4.0 sequence contains a harmonized submission unit message called submission unit.xml. Do we think that's A, true or B, false? Let me give you a second to think about it. It's true. Let's go to our second challenge question. ECTD 4 document lifecycle functionality allows a, one-to-one, one, B, one-to-many, C, many-to-one, or D, all of the above? 
If you're thinking D, you are absolutely correct. All right, so now let's shift gears directly into our FDA implementation strategy uh, for being able to accept these ectv 4 based submissions. It begins at the ICH level, right? FDA is implementing something that was developed at ICH. So obviously the ICH materials need to be ready to go. And they are, um, and they have been actually for, for a few years. So number one, all the ICH specifications about ECTD 4.0 and materials such as um, questions and answers and change requests, and code lists, um, even dates for different regulatory authorities around the world about when they're planning to accept ECTD4 submissions can all be found on the ICH page. Now, I have a QR code on the top of this slide to make it easy, but also at the end of this slide deck, I actually have the URL to the uh, ICH page where you can get this information. Now, um, there are recent updates that were uh, just completed this month in May, and they're going to post up on the ICH page either tomorrow or it could be uh, next week. And that's uh, version 1.6 of the implementation guide and version 1.6 of the code list and the latest version of the Q&A change request document. In addition, uh, if there are any ECTD tool vendors uh, here today or are watching online, ICH is kicking off an ECTD vendor tool work group. This is going to be a great opportunity for the ECTD tool vendors to actually get to have some live discussions with the ICH experts on ECTD 4.0 to talk about any questions they have around up, updating their tools uh, and anything else that's coming down the road. So look for that. Um, it should be uh, posted up on the ICH page in either tomorrow or next week. Now, the ICH stuff is ready to go. So FDA has been busily working to update our systems and test things out so that we can start receiving these 4.0 applications. We have our ECTD 4.0 technical conformance guide, our FDA uh, 4.0 module one implementation package published on our ECTD uh, pages on our FDA.gov website. I've got a QR code at the top of this slide and just like I said that we have the whole URL link on the last slide of the presentation for our ICH documents. We also have the same for the FDA documents. We are also busy uh, updating our ECTD uh, validation and viewing software on the FDA side. So we're currently in the midst of doing UAT testing. And uh, if all goes well, we should be able to start accepting these this summer. Continuing on with our implementation strategy, what we're going to do um, is we're going to initially support ECTD4 based submissions of new applications only, and then subsequent submissions to those new applications. We're going to tackle being able to transition a 322 application to 4.0 at a later date. Right now, it looks like 2026 when we'll be doing that. All of this is voluntary, by the way. There's no requirement here yet for you to use ECTD 4.0. So while we talk about being able to support 4.0 this summer, you will continue to be able to use 3.2.2. We often get questions about how can I submit a sample using ECTD 4.0 to get some technical feedback from FDA before I send in a live submission. We are absolutely going to enable that. We do it today for ECTD version 322 samples. And what we're going to do is we're going to expand that process to allow you to send in 4.0 uh, sample submissions as well. As far as the timing, we are aligning that with when we're going to allow, um, you know, be able to support 4.0 live submissions. At the same time, we'll also open it up for samples to come in. I've put up the page, our ECTD sample page up here, so you know how to get to it easily. Um, that is the page that's going to be updated to give specific 4.0 instructions for sending in a sample. So just check back there in a couple of months, 
We're going to put out a Federal Register notice officially announcing support for ECTD 4.0. So when you see that, you know you can start sending them in. You know you can go to the sample page and you should see that it's updated and so forth. Here are the two URLs as promised. The top one has all the um, ECTD4 implementation guide specification uh, packages and information at the ICH level. The lower link is our regional FDA uh, information for that. How can you prepare for 4.0? These are our recommendations. Discuss 4.0 development plans within your organization. You know, do the, does your organization understand the 4.0 specifications, right? Particularly those that are on the IT side of it. Is there a plan for transitioning to 4.0? Know that you can send in questions. If you have questions, send them in. If there are questions relating to the ICH materials, there's an email address up on that ICH page where you can send those questions. If your questions are more toward regional toward FDA specific implementation, we have our ECTD4 page, which was just on the um, prior slide. Know where to find ECTD4 information. And I hope that this presentation goes a long way um, in covering that if that is a gap that you have right now. And then, you know, know that you can submit, submit sample 4.0 submissions for technical feedback. So here's a poll question. Um, we're very curious. We really want to know, you know, what to expect coming into FDA um, this year and over the next couple of years. So we thought it'd be good to ask here um, this question. So my company, and maybe I get a show of hands in the room if you, if you know, and I know those online will be able to do this electronically. But for this poll question, my company plans to submit an ECTD4 submission in 2024. I see a show of hands if anyone knows of their company. All right, we got one. That's excellent. Maybe. B, 2025. Okay. C, 2026. All right. Or D, you just, you know, you don't know yet. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So in summary, to close it out, uh, ECTD4 builds upon the success of version 322. Through items like enhanced document replacement, harmonized submission unit file, utilization of controlled vocabularies, the ability to rename documents, context groups, uh, those keyword display values. Uh, ECTD4 is ready to implement. That's what we're doing right now here at, at FDA. We're in the home stretch. And FDA has published all the documents, all the materials needed uh, for the ECTD publishing industry to be able to update and roll out their products to uh, industry to be able to use. And we have our ECTD website there at the bottom, which not only has information about the current version, 322, but also the links to 4.0. All right. Thank you for your time, everybody.